dedicated. Uh, okay. King of Kings. Dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that activated. Uh, dedicated, Woo. dedicated, uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated. Uh. King of Kings is my Elohim, it's the most high, yeah. All praise to the king. Part two, hallelujah. Abba's eternal, eternal plan. His glory. Hallelujah. Uh, this is part two. Um, we're going to be dealing with his glory. And this is very important because all of us, matter of fact, everybody that's, that's, that's everybody, all his creation. Especially, especially those of us that uh, believe, hallelujah, in his son, hallelujah, that, that try to walk this walk out. All of us have the same goal, and that's to bring him glory. We was created to glorify him. We may have different missions and different ways that we would bring him glory, but all of us have the same goal, and that's to bring him, him glory. That's what we were created for. That's your purpose. Like I said, there's different missions. There's different ways we would bring it. Some may do it by teaching, some preaching, some may do it by uh, rearing up kids. Some may be doing. Some of us may do it by being in the office, telemarketing, Uber, what, what, whatever you're doing. Hallelujah. Our job is to bring forth, hallelujah, His glory. You may do it with uh, 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 being a garbage man, uh, being a gardener. Um, a singer, a dancer. But make no mistake about it. It's to bring him glory. And we're going to see that today. Hallelujah. This, this is not about us bringing our self glory because man does have a glory. Hallelujah. We're going to see this is all about us. Uh, this, is what we, this is why we were created. To bring him glory. And if we ain't careful, we'll get in the way. Try to take a piece of his glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> we must understand that uh it is very it's, well, it ain't even tricky if we really uh humble ourselves, hallelujah, and understand it's about him. But you can get get in the way of uh or not, not get in the way. Let me say this: you can start uplifting yourself. Next thing you know, you, you get in the glory. But this, this, this is about him. This is 1,000% about us giving him the glory. And preferably today we'll see how we should do it. Because hmm? that's the mission. If your life is not giving him glory, we're wasting our time. So one, one, one thing that will help us out, hallelujah, one thing that will help all of us out, that will help us walk more uh, uh, holy, more righteous, Toward him, if before you say or do anything, ask yourself, is what I'm about to say, is this going to bring him glory or, or how I'm about to behave? What am I, my actions, how I'm about to act, is this going to bring him glory? And if I guarantee if you can keep that at the forefront of your mind before you speak out your mouth, before you do something, will this bring him glory or shame? It'll make you make the right decision or it should. Uh, propel you to make the right decision. If you can say, look, if he was standing here right now, because he, he looking, we got to understand, he's always watching. But if he was here right now, would this bring him glory? Or will he be able to say, this is my son, this is my daughter? Or would it bring him shame? And that'll help you even when you're by yourself. Because hmm? you got the angels watching. Hallelujah. So we're going to get into this uh, Abba's eternal plan. Huh? Uh, part two, like I said, is his glory. Let's let's get this first Corinthians 110 and we're going to get to the lesson. Hallelujah. Um, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing 
and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. Um, yeah. <laughs> About his glory. That, let's prove this what you were created for. Go to Isaiah 43. Let's prove this. Let's prove this what you created for. First and foremost. Let's prove this. Hmm? Yeah. It says, and we're going to start it off at verse uh, 7. We'll start at verse 7 just, just to get straight to the point. Yeah. Even, even everyone that is called by my name, hmm, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yeah, I have made him. Jump to verse 21, please. It says, this people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. You know, this, this is uh, <laughs> this is one of the chapters in verse 10, actually, even though we ain't talking about this, but I'll bring it out. Verse 10 is a, a beautiful script. You know, you, when it says, verse 10 says, um, Ye, where it says, uh, ye are my witnesses. See, we are the real witnesses. You know, you got the organization called the Jehovah Witnesses, but we as witnesses. We're the true witnesses of the Almighty. Hmm? But are you witnessing to bring them glory or the shame? But reading why I came here, because I want us to see something here. We see in verse 7, hallelujah, that is letting us know that he has created us for, for his glory, right? But but notice it says, I have formed him, yeah, have I made him. I have created him for my glory. Okay. Now, when we look at verse 21, it says, This people have I formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. And y'all will today, we're gonna see that. See, the, the whole plan was to bring him glory from the beginning, but because of what happened in the garden. We took on the form of another image. So now he has to form and create, hallelujah, an image inside of us. And we, we all know that image is, is himself. But you're gonna have to be shaped and molded, huh? You're gonna have we, we're gonna have to have our mind change. Because if not, hmm. And only the people that he's forming and he's creating are going to be able to bring him praise. And there's a difference, hallelujah, between uh, uh, giving him praise and giving him glory, too. So it's, it, it's close, but it's a difference. Because you can praise him with your lips, but what? Your heart will be far from him. Hmm? You can give him all the praise all you want, but you could be doing that for a show. But see, this glory, hallelujah. This glory, when you get into it, this glory comes from within. Hmm? Giving him glory comes from within because the, the, the glory, the, the, the glory, when you look, we're gonna look the word up, of course, but but it, it's a it's a value, it's it's a, it's a weight when we get into the word, it, it, it'll show you it, it's an abundance when you understand what glory is, right? It's honor. And you want to go on to honor something that you value. And sometimes we put more value on other things. That's why we honor more things and give more things more glory. Based off how you honor it. See, you can't see, see we can trick each other about glory, but you can't trick him because it's in your heart. You can't even trick yourself, really, about giving some honor and some glory. And there, there's, a, there, 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 there's what you call vain glory as well. I mean, empty. Empty glory. Hmm? That's, that's that, uh, you know how you have uh, different celebrities, not all of them, different celebrities, different actors, entertainers, or whatever you call them, right? 
uh, 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 they get their awards, you know, they, they get their glory, they get honored. But, but I guarantee you, um, 10 years after they got their award, 20 years, maybe five or whatever, those awards don't have the same uh, appeal. They don't have the same, uh, uh, they don't have the same it factor when they first received it because it, 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 it's, it's vanity. That glory fades. You think about hallelujah. <laughs> you go back to talk about uh, Sammy Davis Jr., talk about James Brown, Michael Jackson, uh, 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 Usher. What, what, that, what the other brother, new brother? He ain't too new. The little light skin dude dance real good. Uh, Breezy, Chris Brown. These boys is dancing machines. They, 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 they got a little glory. But but the people that's in our generation, you can mention uh James Brown, but that, that name don't hold that much weight right now. You can mention Michael Jackson, some of these young kids. They, 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 they at one point Michael Jackson was making people pass out because of all that little vain glory he was had on the stage, but it fizzled, it went away. Now people was giving all these certain celebrities honor, but it but it but it fizzled out. Mm? At one point, certain people had certain value. Mm? They had a certain star power about them, but it all faded away. But we we know we serve a, a king that his glory gets stronger. The more you understand who he is, the more he reveals himself to you. The glory gets stronger. huh? It doesn't fade. Then when you got your love, those of us who was, uh, I only got it one time in my life. You uh, I think I was in the third grade, too. Got that uh, high honor road. Boy, I got that little blue ribbon. I was so happy. That thing was in the trash the next school year. I don't know where I said, where it went, but I know I ain't care nothing about it the next year. But at, at one point when I first got that award, oh man, it, it brought some glory to me. But it was vanity. The only thing that's gonna continue to have its, its, its uh, how can I put this? It? It's gonna continue to have its, uh, What's the word I want to use? Uh, value. The only thing that's going to hold its value is the king, is the Messiah, is the word. Huh? All the awards, all the other stuff, it's going to fizzle out. Guarantee you. Hallelujah. Some of us get honored to house in the car. You get your new car, you got a new car smell. Oh, man, you keep that thing super clean. Park all the way in the back of the store. Hmm? But then after next year, you know, you, you want to get you something else because it don't have the same glory to it. You don't honor it as much. It don't lose its value. Some of us, hallelujah, when we first came into the walk, hmm, you, 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 you held the Messiah at high regard because you came in in some trouble. And he built, he got you out of it. He delivered you from things. So, man, you was all about him. Put him first. Couldn't stop learning about him. But now, since you, you know, you got your little thing going on, you got your little trouble, you know, everything seemed to be straight. Has he lost value? Do you honor him as much as you did yesteryear? See, he, 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 see, he's forming a people that's going to bring him glory, that's going to honor him. And that honor will take us from praise to worship. Worship is a lifestyle. Our lifestyle will bring him glory just by the way we live in. But let's, um, let's go to Numbers 14. So keep in mind, that he he's he's forming a people. Some are already formed, some are being formed, and some are coming to be transformed. Well, we can bring forth that glory. 
Not vain glory. Nah. We're going to read it. Numbers 14. Where I want to start it. We get straight to the point here. Hallelujah. We'll start at verse 14. Numbers 14. We'll start at 14. Um, yeah. It says, and they will tell it to the inhabitants. Uh, hallelujah. Y'all know what it is. Um, hold on. Because everybody might not know this story. So I want to get the, the point of it. This is when we first came out of Egypt. Hallelujah. And he was going to destroy the whole nation. Right? Because of sin. But I want us to check something out here. Um, hmm. It says, uh, <laughs> let's, let's start it up at verse 11. It says, and the Lord said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me? How long will they err that believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disherit them. Huh? Disherit them and will make of thee a great nation and, 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 and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest this people in the in the for thou broughtest up this people and that I might uh from among them, and they watch this, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that the Lord art among this people, and that thou art seen face to face, and that the cloud standeth over them, and thou goest before thee by day, for uh, I'm sorry. By day in a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if thou kill, thou shalt kill all these people as one man. Then the nations which have heard of the fame of thee will speak, saying, "See this. See, Moses understood something. We're gonna get it to Moses. Soon. He understood this is about the Almighty's glory. Huh? The Almighty. Look, he he said, I'm for to wipe them out." But Moses understood, and, and you said Moses wasn't no self-glorifying individual. That's why the Bible tells you he was the meek uh, among all the people on the earth. Because the Messiah said, hey, he said, what he told him? I would say, check it out. Man, I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm going to make of you a great nation. So, so he could have made another nation through Moses. But Moses said, no, it ain't about me. This is about your name, your fame. This can cause you to have a bad name among the other nations. Some of us would have said, man, wipe them out. Make me a name. Yeah, wipe, wipe them out. They've been giving me trouble anyways. Get, get rid of them. Let's read. But because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee that the power of my Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity of transgressions, and by no means clearing the iniquity, visiting the iniquity, clearing the, clearing the guilty, clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beg, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even unto now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. Hmm? But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. We're going to go all the way back to Genesis and see this was the whole plan. He got to Israel. He said, look, I, I, we're going to see that he wanted the game plan, and it still is, was for his name to be glorified through the whole earth. So he tell him, he say, uh, verse 21, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. It's going to happen. Watch this. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, 
and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him and have followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein he went and his seed shall possess it. So look, you can see the glory. You can walk amongst the glory. Uh, but unless you have another spirit, unless you have the almighty spirit, uh, you will not get into that promised land. Because they, he, look, they seen the glory. They heard the glory. Hmm? But was disobedient. They, they couldn't bring him glory. Because they didn't have the right spirit to bring him glory. So he said only Caleb, you know, other scripture say, you know, Joshua and Caleb, uh, because they had another spirit. Hmm? Meaning they had the right spirit. They had they had the spirit of the Almighty. They were able, Hallelujah, to go into the land because you only can give him. You only can give him glory with his spirit. This is why when you, when we read Isaiah forty three, he said, "I'm creating and I'm forming. I got I got to I got to transform you, huh? I got to create a people that can praise me." That can bring me glory. Let's go to Genesis. Go back to we're gonna go to Genesis one. Let's go to Genesis one. Out of creation. My jam right there. And I will sing. Oh boy. Genesis one. Let's let's get to the beginning. This why he, this why he's forming. He's creating. It ain't gonna be that. It ain't gonna be that fleshly man that we look in the mirror and see. It's gonna be that inner man, huh? That's gonna bring. We are gonna have to bring this glory from from the from the inside out. Genesis one twenty six. It says, "And let us." Make it watch this and let and God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and, and let him have dominion over the fish and of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, watch this. So, God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them, and God. Now, now look. You know, image and likeness is two different things. We went over that before. The, you know, the, the likeness is his character, huh? It's his mind, cause he he had blue. He was gonna blow that spirit of himself into Adam. So 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 before sin came in, Adam and Eve had the mind of the Almighty. Okay, and it says verse twenty eight, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish, the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So that he, he look, he gave both of them dominion. He said, have dominion, uh, subdue it, take charge. And that replenish don't mean to refill. It means to fill. Right. So he tell them to go out and fill the earth, but to fill the earth. With his image and his likeness, meaning they were supposed to have kids that in the image and likeness of the father. So he'll have a whole bunch of people on the earth that think just like him. Pull the fill the earth up with his glory, with himself. But what happened? They couldn't even. Uh, they couldn't even make it out of the garden. They couldn't even make it out of the garden to go fill the whole earth up. Sin came in. Hmm? And when sin came in, it distorted that image. We're going to see it. We're going to come back to Genesis, but go to Psalms 8 real quick, please. Pull it up this way. 
Go to Psalms 8. We're going to come back to Genesis. I'm going to start at verse, uh, we'll start at verse 4. Psalms 8, Psalms 8, verse 4. Uh, yeah, it's, we'll, we'll read the whole thing, it's right. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. It says, um, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Man, remember this scripture because we're going to hit uh, Hebrews too. Uh, it says, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visit, visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his, uh, under his feet, all sheep, all oxen, yeah, and the beasts of the field the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whosoever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is the name in all the earth. See, originally this was given to Adam. Adam, Adam was crowned, but he lost it. We're going to see the Messiah going to come take, Messiah going to come restore that image. But in the beginning, he had gave that to Adam and Eve. But he lost it because of what? Because of sin. Hmm? So now he had to, he he had to, he he wanted to send his son to, to restore that image. So those of us that believe in his son and receive his son, he can transform us from the inside out, and then we can take that image and spread it throughout the earth. I say we're gonna go back to Genesis, go back to Genesis uh, five. Let's prove it. Originally, what? They was made in his image. They were supposed to go, hallelujah, be fruitful and multiply. But because of sin, let's go to Genesis 5. Let's see what happened here. We'll start at verse 1. This is the book of Genesis of Adam. Generations. I said Genesis. I'm tripping. This is the book of, of generations of Adam and the day that God created man and the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot, watch this, and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name self. So Adam started bearing kids and we understand it was Cain and Abel before that but the reason why we're here because now Adam is now making his his kids are coming out in his own image in his own likeness meaning they got the mind of Adam hmm? the scripture tells us that death passed through all men because of the sin of Adam so everybody that's born out of Adam and that's all of us right here we have what you call a sin in your flesh you're not born a sinner but you're born with this flesh that has sin in it and the minute you obey it, death on the table. Might, might have fight, and I'm talking about death to your soul, but this flesh going to die anyways because it's death in this flesh. But when you obey that sin, when you obey that sin that's in the flesh, now you got now you got a soul problem. Hmm? But ain't nothing you can do about this flesh anyway. It's going to die anyway. It's, 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 it's going to return back to that dust. Huh? Because of what Adam did in that garden. But if you obey this flesh one time, you got a problem with your soul now. So now you, you, you don't have the, you, you don't have the, you, you can't give him glory. With, with a, uh, you, you can't give him glory according to your flesh. You can give people some glory. People will glorify you. You probably, what do you say? You can pat yourself on the bike. But it, it ain't giving him no glory. Because he's the only one that knows uh, how to, how, how, he's the only one who knows how to put the glory in you, the glory that he will receive. We don't know. Because we could be praising and dancing and singing and thinking about uh, 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 something else that, that got nothing to do with the Almighty. 
We could be dancing and singing and praising, thinking we're giving them glory, but yet we got hate in our heart. We got bitterness in our heart. We got unforgiveness in our heart. Can't give them no glory that way. Uh, we're going to come back here. We'll just work with it. Let's go to Hebrews uh, 1 3. I want to pull this out. And I pull this up too. Hope my uh, pull this thrones up so y'all can see it. Uh, Hebrews 1 3. I want us to see. Um, those of us who have the stronger, I should be able to put it up on the screen. Hallelujah. It says, um, let me get straight to the point. Yeah, it says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of the power when he, when he, Watch this. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. It's talking about the Messiah. But when you look up that word, I'm going to put it up because I put it up here. When you look up that word, uh, express image, it's G5481. Let me share my screen because I want to see this. Hallelujah. Check it out. Check it out. Let's read it. Strong's G, 5481. Character. Character. Which, in other words, is character. Okay? So it's letting you know, when it says express image, right? This is... Uh, let me go down. Yeah. How do you go out this thing? Let me go down. Hallelujah. There you go. The instrument used for engraving or carving to, to mark, stamp upon the instrument of rough out, out of it, a mark, a figure burnt, or stamp an impression. The Zyke express the image of any person or thing, mark, likeness, precise reproduction in, in, in every respect. Okay. But um, let me stop sharing this now. Mm hmm. All right, let me stop sharing. So when he, when the, it's going to be, this is going to be important when we get to the rest of this text. Listen, so, so when the Messiah, remember, everybody that come out of Adam, right, have a distorted image. So the Messiah, when he come back into the earth, he is the express image of the father. Meaning he has the character of the father. The only way to get back to what Adam lost is to go through the Messiah, to get this mind of Christ, to get the character of the Almighty. Because the game plan, and it's going to happen whether you're a part of it or not, is he's going to fill this earth with his glory. And you can't do that if you don't have his character. And the only way to get to that character, you have to go through the Messiah. Because he brought back, hallelujah, he is the express image he reconciled us back to the Father. He gave us a, a, a he opened a door, hallelujah, to, 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 to give us the opportunity to be transformed back into that image, to put that hidden man inside of us. This go for uh, male and female. All of us have the opportunity to have that inner man. Hmm? All of us. But who's going to obey the inner man? Who's going to obey the inner man that that's the that that can the spirit hallelujah that can that can that can give the Almighty His glory? Since we're in Hebrews, stay right there. We ain't gonna be flipping all those. Let, let's uh, right there, chapter two, chapter two, and we're gonna start at verse uh, four. So we ain't gonna we gonna stay right here. Read the, Watch this. Um. Remember what we read earlier, right? And and uh in the Psalms 8. Um I'm gonna start at verse one, man. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. 
if the word spoken by the angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedient receive it, just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subject the word to come, wherefore we speak. Okay, but one in a certain place testifying, saying, What is a man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things subject under his feet, for in that he put all all in subjection unto him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet, watch this, but now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste the death for every man. Hmm? See, see, remember, uh, uh, well, let me read verse 10. I got to read verse 10. I got to read verse 10. We got to read verse 10. See, understand this. Adam was crowned. Adam, not just Adam. Adam and Eve both was crowned to have dominion, huh? To be fruitful and most power, but they lost that. They lost the crown. Huh? They lost that dominion. Huh? But here come the Messiah who got the, He got it back. Hmm? Now through the Messiah, we, we, we can get it back. We can have dominion. We have the power because of the image, because of the character. But let me read verse 10. Hallelujah. Uh, for it became him for whom all things and by whom all things and bringing many sons into glory. Uh, so you got to be brought to this glory so you can give back the glory. Uh, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. We know who the captain of our salvation is. Hmm? That's the king. But I want us to see Adam had it. They lost it. The Messiah came and got the crown. Uh, and through him, guess what? He can bring us into this glory. But not that we're going to glorify ourselves. But now we can do what, what, what was supposed to be done from that garden. And that's fill this earth with his glory. With his mind, with his character. With his likeness. Uh, with his love. But let's walk all the way through it, though. Let's walk all. We're gonna go all the way back. We're gonna because we understand Adam lost it. When Adam lost it, who who he grabbed at Adam? He 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 started dealing with uh, Noah. We started dealing with all these people. He he got to the point where he all he got to Abraham. Hmm? He told Abraham what he told Abraham. I'm gonna make of you a great nation. But what's the point of making Abraham a great nation? He just wanted so Abraham would just say, hey, he made a great nation. No, he's going to make him a great name, but that name is going to be able to go through the whole earth. Because the people that have the same faith Abraham had, you know what? I don't want to get ahead. I'm talking a little bit too much. Let's read this Bible. Um, let's make it make sense. Hmm? Go to go to 1 Corinthians 15. Let's take our time. First Corinthians 15. Let, let's, let's take our time. Because look, this is about his glory. It's not about us. I'm going to take our time. We'll slow walk. Hallelujah. And we pray. I pray. Hope y'all don't want to quote me, man. I pray for, you know what I'm saying, Adam and Eve, that the Almighty have mercy on them. Huh? I pray that uh he have mercy on them. Huh? Any of the forefathers, huh? And matriarch, patriarchs, have mercy on all of us. Because all men have fallen short of glory. Except one. Fifteen. First Corinthians 15. Hmm. 
let's start it at verse um uh, we'll talk about the um it's the glory of the uh stars glory of the, the moon uh first Corinthians 15 Let, let's hit uh verse uh we'll, we'll start at verse verse 38 all right first Corinthians 15 verse 38 it says man hallelujah man I love him hallelujah I'm getting a little excited let me come it says but God gave it a body as it had pleased him and to every seed his own body hmm all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of the beasts, and another of fishes, and another of birds. There are celestial bodies and bodies ter terrestrial, but there the glory of the celestial. There the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So he's talking about flesh and spirit. Like I said, both got a got a glory. Don't this flesh got a little glory to it too? There's some people in this earth they they get high praise, high honor. Hmm? And we, man, I mean, we, boy, I ain't gonna say we. There's one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star is different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in corruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It's talking about this body. Right. Now watch this. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Huh? So you got a natural body. and You have a spiritual body. The natural body is the one that you see when you look in the mirror. The spiritual body is the one in the inside. Hmm? And also watch this. And it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is, is, is the Lord from heaven. As it is, the earthly, such are they also that are earthly, and it's, watch this, and it's the heavenly, such are they also heavenly. And as we have bore, meaning as we have put on the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. OK, so look, all he, what he's saying is, look. Just as we all born in this flesh. Through Adam, we all of us come out of Adam. That's his flesh. But those of us that's born again, going to bear the image of the king, huh? which is of the heavens. And that's a spiritual body. You you <laughs> you're going to get a spiritual body either way. You're going to get one that's fit to be in the kingdom or you're going to get one that's going to fit to be in that fire. It's on you. But he desires us. He don't want nobody to perish. He desires us to bear the image of the uh, of Abba, to have the same image that Adam had before he fell, that we will be able to bring him glory. Let's go back to Genesis. We're going to go all the way back to Genesis. Let's walk it now through. I want us to understand. Go to Genesis 11 to show that this plan has been unfolding since day one. We already dealt with Adam, how he told him to be fruitful and multiply. Um, we ain't going to go there, but you can go read. I think it's, I think it's Genesis 9. I, I, I can't call it a like, verse. It may be Genesis. It got to be Genesis. It, Genesis 9, where he told uh, 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 Noah, when they got out the ark, he told him to be fruitful and multiply. As he wiped everybody off, as he wiped everybody off the face of the earth, as he destroyed everybody but the eight souls, he come back and he tell Noah the same thing that he told Adam. Look, be fruitful and multiply. What happened? Noah had a garden. It, man, you get into that story. Both of them in the garden. Both of them messed up in the garden. Both of them got uncovered. Uh, both of them was found naked. Both of them had to be covered up. But we see the we also see a curse put on both. Well, the curse got put on him. But I want us to understand that the Noah's sons, they end up falling. But the game plan was to be fruitful and multiply in righteousness. But they couldn't even get it today. I, I, they they couldn't even make it out the year before they fell. 
but he always wanted us to be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. But in righteousness, in holiness, bearing his image. Uh, Genesis 11, uh, I just want to hit this Tower of Babylon real quick. Um, let's start at verse 1. And the whole earth was one language and one speech. And it came to pass that they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there, and they said one to another, Go, let us make brick and burn it thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go, <laughs> boy, go to let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. See, they, they got they got smart, or they think they smart. But guess what? They've been disobedient. Because the game plan from the garden. Huh? Was to do what? To be scattered. He wanted his name to go through the whole earth. But we got the people here saying, nah. Let, let, let us, and not only they, they don't want to be scattered, but he also saying they want to make a name from themselves. It's not about our name. He wanted his name, which is Shem, which means character. He wanted his character to be uh, 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 spread through the whole earth. But they want to make a name for themselves. Most people want to make a name for themselves. Want to leave something, leave a legacy, leave me a legacy name. Huh? Leave my stamp on here. Man, like I said before, you can have a great name, and then a hundred years from now, man, that name don't have to carry the same weight as it did when you first uh, uh when you was in the earth. Matter of fact, you can have a great name. Your kids come out and mess up that name. The only name we need to be concerned about is the Almighty. Huh? Spreading Yahshua, who the world called Jesus Christ, let his name reign. You know, growing up in a neighborhood, you, you we just say that uh, when somebody was kind of popular in the neighborhood, we say his name rang. Everybody know him. He's doing his thing. Hmm? Next thing you know, 10, 10 years later, five years later, you, you be saying, oh, we used to say, boy, he used to have it. But at the time when he had it and everybody looking at the person, oh, man, this guy's popular. He, he's the guy or she, 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 she it. But then you go, to, they used to have it. I remember when. See, at one point, the name was good. But because the sin. And want a desire to lift up yourself, guess what? That name that name will get torn. That name will go down real fast. Hmm? We ain't gonna name no pastors. But you got pastors at one time, they, they name was big time, all over TV. Next thing you know, the names start going down. Name don't carry the same weight. But the Messiah name still ringing. Hmm? We sh we should be learning something. You just look at history. And understand, you look at people that had great names at one time. The Messiah name still up there. Ain't gonna always be up there. So we need to focus on, hallelujah, like the scriptures say, spreading his name, his character to the earth. But let me finish reading this. They was disobedient. Hmm? They, they didn't want to, they didn't want to be scattered. It was his whole game plan to go fill the earth. Boy. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one and they have one, all one language. And this began to do. And now and, and, and nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go down. Let us go. Go to let us go down and there conform their language, confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. See, see, like, if we'd have been doing the right thing, they'd have been doing the right thing, they would, they would have naturally uh, spread it throughout the earth, but they would have been doing it with the right character. But now he got to, not, not, now he had to come down, mess up the language, mess up their languages, and send them out.
His, his will will be done. We, we, just because people don't want to be obedient, you ain't stopping nothing. His will going to be done. Because he's going to find somebody that's, 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 that's willing to obey him. Matter of fact, he, he said, what did, what did Messiah told him? Boy, Messiah said, I, I have rocks cry out. And you know what? Some people don't believe rocks and cry out. But just, just think on this level right here. Rocks are from the dirt, right? Rocks from the dirt, right? What are we made of? We just happen to have his spirit in us. But we think, man, he can't put his spirit in a rock. It ain't nothing but dirt. But he got, he put his spirit in us and we can uh, cry. We can praise him. Don't get too high-minded. He wasn't just talking. He was letting them know, man, I, the rocks are cry out. Hmm? We got to understand, we, we're nothing without the king. Hmm? Nothing. You might have your little glory. You might be popping a little bit. If you, you know, some people don't believe in the king. They don't believe in the Bible. They got a little buzz. Huh? But eventually that buzz die out. We got to keep our mind on the king. Keep our mind on him. Get, 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 we, we must understand we're here to glorify him. In, in our life, the only way to glorify him is by lifting him up. It's not about self-glory. Did I finish that out? I'm going to read verse 9. Well, verse 8. So the Lord scattered them about from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, in the name of the called Babel, because the Lord did did there conform the languages of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So now everybody scattered throughout the whole earth. They are supposed to do that anyways. But he wanted us to be on one accord or one language. Hmm. Isaiah 45. Please. Ah, uh, let's get done. Uh, boy, we are, hallelujah. Zero forty five. We'll start at verse. Yeah, I, I know I'm going here. We, I just want to show some 18. I want to go to 18 to, to show something. It says, for thus the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. So the whole reason for him even making the earth was that that earth can be inhabited. So, yeah, he, he, when you look at the Genesis, he put the, in the garden, but he formed the whole earth, but he wanted to inhabit it. So he, he, but inhabited with what? His spirit, with his character. So the only reason why the earth was even created was so he can get the glory, but he wanted his name, his character to be spread through the whole earth. It just happened to start out in the garden. But he got messed up. It's going to come a little bit more clear because even though, see, his will, will look, Abba's will is going to get done whether we like it or not. Or whether you want to be a part of it or not, he will be glorified. Every knee is going to bow. Go back to Genesis 18, please. Well, go to Genesis 18. We never hit this before. I want to read it. Cause this plan, man, he, 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 it's so amazing when you like what he's doing, because even no disobedience, people are being disobedient. We, we all have transgressed, man. He still, his grace, his mercy, he's still going to, his name going to go throughout the whole earth. 
even with all the disobedient and bike slide and uh, uh, profaning his name, nobody going to be able to stop it. Um, yeah, let me, let me get Genesis 18 because this is when, okay, so so now the, the uh, Tower of Babylon, they don't spread through the whole earth. Now you got people all over the whole earth. So now he's going to go uh, get Abraham. Hmm? He's going to go get somebody that's going to be faithful and obedient to start this, this process, which Adam should have a Adam should have been doing. Then Noah and his sons should have been doing it. He's going to get Abraham. Let's just read it. It says, seeing that 18, 18, Genesis, uh, Genesis 18, 18, seeing that Abraham should surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Well, look, we, we talked about it last week, how they're going to be blessed. It's the Messiah that's, that, see, he's going to, of course, he's going he to go down to Jacob. Then he's going to go to Israel, right? We're going to deal with us in a while. Then, ultimately, it's the Messiah. See, this is how all nations are going to be blessed. Hmm? But remember, everybody's scattered. So look at part of his pain. Look at our, that's why we here. Well, this will be the last one in Genesis. Go to Genesis uh, 28. And we're gonna get into we're gonna get into it. Twenty-eight verse fourteen. It says, "And thy seed," he, he talking to Abraham. He saying, "Thy seed should be as dust on the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be be blessed." So we see the plan that he already, the, the plan was, hey, that these people is going to go to all over the earth. It was supposed to happen naturally with, with just being obedient, seeing you out here, seeing you over there, you got his character, go take my word over there. Huh? But what happened? Couldn't even get out, couldn't even get out of Egypt good. Transgress, sin. You, I'm gonna get these people. Get Israel. You're gonna get us. They're gonna carry my word. It's gonna be a kingdom of priests. Failed. This is why the Messiah, he had to come. Well, he was coming anyways. He was coming anyways because what happened in that guard? Uh, but this is why he had to go to, to Israel first to get the priest straight uh, so they can go out to all nations like that uh, Matthew 28 say. Because, uh, look, the game plan was for, remember the game plan is his, that his name be spread through the whole earth, that his glory be over the whole earth. But he's going to use the people to do it. But the people... The people got to have him inside them. If not, you're going to be going trying to make a disciple of yourself. You're going to be going trying to make people bow down to you, glorify you. Who wants some dirt? You want some dirt? You, it, yeah, uh, they, I want people to bow to me. What You want some dirt to bow to you? You know what I'm saying? It's just a dirt bound to you. <laughs> nah, he, he's going to form a people. Hmm? Create, create, he's gonna create himself in the nation. And the nation's supposed to go out and plant that seed, which is the Messiah, and all people who want to receive it. Then we'll get back on one language. We'll get back on one accord. Because the spirit bear witness with the spirit, but we, we we'll get that later. That's 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 um I want to go to um is that it right there? Let's go to let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus. 31. Thirty, thirty-three. We're gonna get into it. I want us to see something here with, with Moses. We already know Moses. When Moses went to that burning bush, we know that Moses already had, had an encounter with, with him. At, at the burning bush, right? Jump down. We're going to read verse. So we ain't going to read that. Let's go to verse. 
Hmm. Yeah, let's look at verse 18. Keep in mind, Moses already had the encounter at the burning bush with him. Notice what Moses say, Moses say here in 33, 18. He says, <laughs> and he said, I beseech thee, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. He said, I'm begging you, show me your glory. He already met him, right? But now Moses is saying, show me your glory. Let's look at this word glory real quick. Pull that up here. Let's look at this word glory so we can see something here. Because Moses is saying, show me your glory. Hold on here. Let me share this. Let me pull it up. All right, this glory. Right, you Strong's H, 3519. Kavod. Kavod. Okay. Notice it's the word honor in there. Well, uh, uh, honorable, honor. You see splendor. You see abundance. You see riches. You see reverence. Okay. Um, some other versions, if you got a certain strongs, it actually tell you mean to await, right? But what I wanted to glean from it is that um, you see abundance there. You see honor there. So what Moses, Moses already ha had met him, but Moses, what he's saying here, Moses saying, I want more of you. Hmm? That's what he's saying. Show me your glory. Because Moses understands... <laughs> Moses understand, look, once you got a piece of him, once once you have an encounter with him, the more, the more you, the closer you get him, the more you want of him. Hmm? Moses understood this. He just met him on the mountain in a burning bush, but now Moses says, show me your glory. I want an abundance of you. I want an overflow of you. I want to be able to honor you more. See, the, 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 listen, the only, it's, it's a way that's got to happen, though. John said it like this. I think it was John. He said, it was John. John said what? I must decrease that he what? Increase. See, you can't have, you can't be full of you and be full of him. Meaning you're going to have to kill this flesh so he can increase himself in you. We're going to see why that, we're going to see why this is true in a minute. But understand Moses Moses is saying, because when, when, look, the abundance, when, when you understand his glory, this is about coming closer. This is about getting more intimate with him. Hmm? Mo Moses telling him, we're going to read. Let's read. Let me let me read. He said, and he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. Right? Me, me, Because Moses want to honor him. That's what I want to see. Moses, he want more of abundance of him. He want to know him more than just talking to him in the bush. He says, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show you, and I will show you mercy, and whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for thou, for, for there shall no man see me and, and live. Okay. I mean, and, and the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by my name, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall com come to pass, while my glory pass by, I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand and while I pass by. Right? Um, and we understand other scriptures going to what tell you what his glory, what, what his character is, right? It's his mercy, his grace, it shows his, it's his love. It, this is he's showing you he was showing Moses actually to know him more so his glory will also reveal to you who he is read down to what uh and I will make yeah and I will make thee and I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my bite parts but my face shall not be seen okay so Moses he already met him in the burning bush but Moses said let me see your glory I need more of you. See, some of us, nobody here, nobody here. It is some people who they just get a little bit and that's enough. But those of us who have had an, a real encounter with them, you want more. You, you, you can't stop seeking him. You, you hunger, you thirst after more because you want him to reveal more of himself unto you. But guess what? You, you can't get more of him and then have 
you still be full at the same time. So you got to decrease. You got to be able to die to yourself. And then he's going to be able to give you more of him. That way you'll be overflowing with his glory. Man, what you think? What do we think when I think it was Peter when he passed by and he said shadow healed, healed the brother. That was the glory of the almighty. We'll, we'll, have, we, we'll be so full of his glory that all oh, we won't even have to say nothing. We just show up. And his glory will be coming out of us so much. The light will build you so much. That's why Moses had to, he was hanging, he, he, was, he, he was with him up in that mount. Moses had to come down. He had to put a veil over his face just by being in the presence of the Almighty. The glory was shining through it, shining through him. So you imagine if the people would have been obedient, huh? If we would have obeyed his voice, you got a whole nation of people with that light in this dark world. Better yet, just imagine yourself individually. You get so full of that glory, you get that overflow, huh? You, 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 you go to your family members, friends, jobs, wherever, and it's darkness, the light show up because of his glory. What got to happen when light show up? What, what must darkness do when light show up? When his glory show up, what darkness got to do? It has to disappear. It fades. Got to go. It has to go. It, it cannot stay when, when, when the glory, when his presence is there, darkness must go. See, when we understand he had don't kick Satan, them, Satan and his little demons out, out of the heavens, right? They don't came down here. So he want to fill his earth up with his glory. What got to happen to Satan? They, they, too much light. They got to get out of here. Send them to the abyss. Look, oh man, let me take my time. Just, just understand this. Hallelujah. When the Messiah showed up, that one brother that had them demons in him, what that demon said? That demon said, it, are you going to judge me before the time? Huh? The demon knew the light was in the Messiah. It was able to see that glory on the Messiah. Thought he used to get cast out right then. That same thing can happen to us. If we walk in the power of the Almighty. If we be obedient to his word, if we willing to give him glory and not take the glory for yourself. Man, nowadays a brother get a little, get a little juice, get a little healing power. You, they want to try to, even though the brothers ain't doing it, they try to sell it. They be selling fake anointing, sell, selling fake healings. Listen, look, when we see that word honor, when you understand honor, it, it, it's talking about the value of something, right? Like I said earlier, you only honor stuff that you value. And depending on how much you value it, that's how much honor you're going to give. It. That's how much glory you're going to give it. If, we, if, if if one of us was to take, let's say, $10,000 and we give it to somebody, right? They may give us a little honor. They may say, oh, man, they, they may give you a little glory. Like, oh, my God, thank you so much. God bless you. I love you. Because they know the value of that money. But you can take a box of rocks, take a box of rocks to somebody, and give it to them. They gonna look at a rock and say, "Rocks, thank you." Right? You you call that same person by an hour or thirty minutes, whatever, and you say, "I need you to beat them rocks, beat them rocks open, because it's diamonds and gold in them rocks." Huh? Now it's the same box of rocks, but because now it, they know it's diamonds and gold inside it, it changes the value. Hmm? Now that, that now that box of rocks become it become honor to them, it become uh, some value to them because they they understand what's inside of it. Before it was just rocks, but when they when they understand when you tell them, hey boys, it's some it, it, I put it's, it's, it when you see it, it, it's diamond and gold in them rocks. Now it changes how they value that thing. See, we look, we can, hallelujah. Look, see, the Almighty got his glory in the earth already. When you look at the stars, when you look at the, the trees, some of us being awe, when you look at the ocean, it's certain animals, like I like horses. You look at certain horses that be so beautiful, you'd be like, man, look at some look at dolphins, you look at you can look at his creation. 
and be in awe and see his glory. You go to certain places and see his glory. But man, don't you understand? Don't we understand? Hallelujah. When we understand the glory of him transforming us from darkness to light. That should be enough for us to praise and worship him, to understand what he has done inside of our bodies. When we can look at, at, at each other and see the glory inside of each other, how he has changed us from darkness to light. When you know a sister and brother don't think and act the same way they act five years ago or last year or even last month. You can see them react another way, act in a godly way, talk in a godly manner, and it be sincere. When you know that person a couple months ago would have cussed you out or cussed the other person out. But you can see the glory of the Almighty transforming them. We ain't got to, we do look at his, his creation, but we his creation. We should be, that's, that's enough to give him glory just to look at how he's transforming each individual. But we can't get fast past the flesh. So now you understand, man, when you understand he, who he is in essence, huh? when you understand his, his love, his mercy, his grace, his compassion, how much do you value that? How much will you honor him? How much glory would you give him? When you understand how valuable he is to you, let alone to, to this world. You can just look in the mirror. And if you if you sincere, if you know he has transformed you or he's transformed, you, he's changing you, you can give him the glory. Don't, don't give yourself the glory. Don't pat yourself on the back and say, oh, God, I'm doing a good job. I'm really killing this flesh. No, you give him the glory because it's his spirit that work is in us. See, when you, we, oh man, when, 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 look, when we really can understand who he is and what he's doing, man, you don't, you, you don't need, look, you can give him praise anywhere. You'll be able to give him glory anywhere, even if you're by yourself. Because you'll know, what bitch will you say? You'll be able to say, look what the Lord has done. Hmm? You, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, uh, look, I don't want to down. Uh, like the, the, the birds, the, the trees, those are the beautiful things he created. But I want us to focus on what he's doing inside of us with his spirit and why he deserves to get the praise and the glory, why he deserves to get all the glory. But he want that glory. He want that glory that's transforming us, that's changing us. He want that glory to be spread throughout the whole earth. He's turned us into himself. Where no darkness can even be around us. He want to be able to look down at his creations. He want to look down at his people and say, look at me. Listen, if the people understand who is inside the Messiah, if they understand who is in the Messiah and not looking at that flesh thinking, yeah, uh, looking at that's Joseph's son. If they were really able to hear. Huh? He would have been of some value to them. We, we, but what happens is we got to get to the point where we, hallelujah, first level is his word. Where we can, he will reveal himself to us through his word, and then we will be able to honor him more. Hmm? The only way you're going to be able to give him true glory, I'm talking about the glory from within, you're going to have to have a relationship with him. If not, it's just going to be based off what he's doing for you at that time. And then when it ain't working out in your way, you're going to go right back to your old nature. Because the, the glory don't mean that to you that much. It only means his glory, you only honor him as much as what he's giving you right then and there. You're not going from glory to glory. You you just you just in a you, you're in a time where, okay, he blessed me today. Let me give him some glory. Or he blessed me right now. Uh, or he got me out of the situation. Let me give him some honor. Let me give him some glory. It don't work like that. Hmm? He ain't looking for people to 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 give him glory uh, when when things are going good. Only he want to be glorified in your life, no matter what's going on. He wants you to be able to show forth his his, his love. His his he wants you to be able to, he want to be able to 
live through us, no matter what's going on in our life, no matter what we're suffering. Listen, how much do you value him? That's how much you're going to glorify him. Because, uh, again, if you don't see him in that valuable, it's just like, oh, it's, it's just like the box of rocks. But then once you realize it's some, it's some it, them rocks or whatever, it, that's the best way I can explain it. They, 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 they have some importance. Now it become valuable to you. Now you begin to treasure it. Man, he want us to be able to see himself. He want us to be able to see him inside of each other. Why we can't do it? Why you think it's so hard to see the almighty? And I'm not talking about people who don't have the almighty in them. I'm talking about why you think it's so hard to see him inside of each other. You know, it's your own heart. Your own fleshly heart, because you only see and hear about what's in your heart. That's why you're trying to transform us so we can just see love. Huh? I'm not saying you're going to let anybody just walk in sin around you. I'm mean, not talking about that, but he wants us to be able to see himself. He wants us, want us to be able to see with the eyes and hear with the ears of the Messiah. He's creating us in his image. We'll be able to see darkness and be able to pray. Be able to fast for people that, 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 that that's going through uh, trials and tribulations, huh? Not just condemn them. We bring correction, we we bring rebuke, we reprove, but we, we all that condemning that's because the heart ain't right. His glory will fill this earth. I can guarantee you. You just think Moses was saying. Fill me up. Uh, give, give me your abundance of your glory. And guess what? He done it all to the point that Moses could had to put a veil over his face. Man, some of us can just get out the Sabbath, just got finished reading your Bible, and then you go to the store, somebody cut you off, or, or, or somebody, I raise my hand on this. I don't bend, just got the Sabbath, right? Wait till the sun go down. I can't go to the store till the sun go down. I don't want to buy nothing to the sun go down. Get to the store. It, it's the next day now. Man, that was one time this lady. <laughs> boy, I had to repent. This lady, boy, wasn't my wife. But she was just like my wife from this. Man, she had so many coupons and one no other line open. I'm standing there like, yo. She seen I had another couple items in my hand. I'm thinking, why she let me go before? She knows she had all these coupons. Now, I'm, I, I, they probably can feel my energy. But instead of me just going and praying to God, thanking him that he gave me the legs to stand in line, I got the money to, to, to the gas money to get to the store. I even got money to go to the store to buy something. Instead of me just thanking the Almighty for that, he, he probably would have glorified himself in me right there in that line. Could have lit the whole store up. But I'm in the line with the attitude. Like, man, why this lady taking so long with these coupons? Then you get, I remember, then you get the coupons. Then you got something wrong. You got to tell the people. This lady don't call somebody. This was a real issue because I remember it. Uh, I remember, like, man, I messed up afterwards. I'm like, I really messed up because I knew how I was thinking inside. Man, I got so fierce. Just when I think she done the coupons, they had a wrong item. She got to call some joker from the bike. Uh, go check this for me or whatever she was doing. So now I got to wait another, what seemed like an hour, but it probably wasn't nothing but 10 minutes. But my point is, my mind wasn't on him. My mind was on what I had to do. That was a time I could have been glorifying him, been thanking him just for allowing me to breathe. Now, I'm not even worrying about what's going on with this cash register and that lady. I'm not even worrying about that. I'm glorifying him. Then I probably could have went in a, a, a song and a praise. And could have set some people free. That is what Paul done. He, he wasn't in the store, but remember Paul was in jail? And uh, you see them brothers start praying and, and, and singing in there. What it done? Didn't it break the, uh, uh, it, it, it opened the jail cells and set them other brothers free. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Was, he was being glorified. So don't you understand? Man, go to a feet with them. Ephesians uh, 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 112 real quick. Let's see. Because, see, if we glorify the Almighty, other people will be able to praise him. Let, let, let's see it. 
see what I'm, I'm talking about. I want to show the scripture though. Hold on here. You being there uh, reading the Bible, talking to the kids, now you go to cussing, uh, cussing each other out, talking crazy, you know what I'm saying? And then wonder why the kids don't want to praise God. The kids are like, man, I can't wait to get out of this house. Hallelujah. What is, what did I say? Ephesians 1 12, I think. I think this it. Um, yeah, it said, watch this. It says, um, I'm gonna start at verse 11. Man, verse 9. It says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he has purpose in himself, right? That in this dispensation of the fullness of time he may gather together all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Remember, he, he was going to disinherit them, but that's a whole other issue. He gain an inheritance, right? The Messiah was able to come back and get the crown. So now we can get the inheritance, right? That inheritance before the Messiah, yeah, we know we Israel, but check this out. If you don't believe in the Messiah, you ain't getting no inheritance. The inheritance now is only coming straight from the king. He giving out rewards. You ain't getting a reward because of no bloodline. I guarantee you that. You're getting death. Get that straight. It says, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Verse 12 is why I came here. That we should be Watch it. That we should be to praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So it said that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So we, how are we to be the praise of his glory if we acting crazy, talking crazy? Uh, uh, how can I put this? Uh, uh, we're not acting according to his spirit. Hmm? How can we be the praise of his glory? Look. The, the Bible says that the, the, uh, uh, the, the wife will be the husband glory, right? It is the husband glory. But if she acting crazy, talking crazy, she ain't no glory. Same thing. We, we his wife. So if we, we able to, 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 to walk and honor him and glorify him, don't you understand that other people hmm, will be able to see that? That's why uh, uh, in Deuteronomy, the people, it said the nations were supposed to look at us and say, what a wise and understanding people. Oh, what a God they serve. Because you were supposed to be, we were supposed to be obedient to that word, that light was going to shine. That people be able to see the wisdom. And glorify the Almighty based off us just being obedient. We got to understand, he has chosen a certain one of us to, to, to bring forth the praise of his glory into our family. And the reason why your family ain't getting it right, or you, you giving them all the scriptures you want, you're talking to them, praying for them. But the reason why they not getting it, because they, they don't see no glory. They don't see him shining through you. They hear you, but they, they don't see nothing. They don't see a transformation. They don't see him in you. Yeah. You know, we say, well, we're going to say it no more. People you say, well, I ain't Jesus. I'm not Yahshua. I'm, and then, hey, 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 I, I ain't perfect. <laughs> That's when we use that scripture quick. Every man falls short of the glory. Yeah, yeah. Quit thinking, oh, they just want to be disobedient. They just don't want to listen. They don't want, they don't want to keep these commandments. They just want to be wicked. They love the world. No, he has chosen you. He is transforming you. Uh, he perfecting us so he can be glorified, hallelujah, through us so they can see his glory. They can see the light and it will transform them. You stopping you. Some, some of us stopping our own family members from coming. Then those, those people that's really wicked to say something crazy like, well, I had to get it the hard way. They're going to have to get it the hard way. Wake up. How much do you honor him? How much do you want him to be glorified through you? Because his name, as we had read earlier, his name, hallelujah, will fill this earth. 
he will, he, his glory will fill this earth with people, hallelujah, that's willing to praise him. And if you don't want, look, he's trying, he's not trying, he's doing it. He's creating himself in us. He's perfecting us. But if you don't want to be perfected, if you don't want to be, be uh, created in the image of his son, guess what? Hit the door. Is it, I got somebody else. Got somebody else that'll take it. I got somebody else. You don't want, I got somebody else. Trying to use us. But see, that flesh so nasty, that flesh uh, try to take peace of the glory. That flesh won't flesh to, to praise it, to glorify it. Let me see if we're done with that, man. Should I read down? Nah, we'll start right there. Let's get to the king. Um. Let's go. Let's get to the king. Go. Go to Philippians. Uh, Philippians two. Let's see, we're gonna start at. Oh, there we be fasting. Pray. We need to pray and fast. Uh, for these people. Nothing wrong with praying and fasting. But man, it, it may not even be that. It could be that you just not letting him use you. You're not decreasing. So he can increase. All it may take is you to decrease and he'll increase in you and then they'll stop living that type of way. Think you're a peculiar treasure for what? You the apple of his eye for what? Just, just so we, we could be cute or we could just, oh, we his people, hallelujah. For what? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of him coming inside of us? Hallelujah. Um, we'll start this at verse. Uh, let's start at verse. We'll start at verse one. I ain't gonna cut it short. We'll start at verse one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. we'll start there. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels, uh, bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. That vain glory is empty. So I was saying earlier, there's a glory that's vain, meaning it's empty. That's that's most of these. The, that's the world system, you know. That that, that, that honor man. You, you know how crazy this world is. They, they'll have a superstar who got millions of dollar come let him eat for free, and then somebody that's hungry, you don't even feed him. Because you put value on, 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 see, man, hallelujah. Listen, most people, they only value and honor people that they know can give them something back. This is why these people let, hey, hey, they'll let somebody come, like a famous uh, person come into their restaurant or uh, so they can eat. So then they, they in their mind, they thinking, well, other people see this person eat here. I'm going to get more people to come. If some people only uh, get, they'll, they'll give money to the pastor. They, they, man, they'll throw that money to that pastor. But they thinking they look at the pastor like, oh my God, he, he's high up here, so I know he can bless me. But then you you throw this money to the pastor, but know the person next to you hungry, lights about to get cut off. They struggling, ride right past people uh, that's broke down. I ain't telling nobody to stop and help nobody. I'm not, but I'm just un just understand what I am saying. Listen, if it's somebody that you that you got a high regard, man, I don't care if it's pouring down and raining. You will pull over. Ladies, I ain't telling you to just pull over. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to give the understanding 
that we don't have respect of person. This is about his glory. Okay. We 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 don't we don't we, we it's about him being glorified, not us being glorified. A lot of stuff people do is because deep down they want to be glorified. They're not doing stuff to glorify him. They second deep down is that they want that pat on the bike. This is about him being glorified. The Messiah didn't want no pets on the bike. The Messiah didn't do anything to be glorified. Get, we gonna read it too. He done everything to glorify the Father. And he tell us in Ephesians 5, 1, he, Paul say what? Follow me as I follow Christ. You look at the word follow, that word follow that you look it up, it means uh, uh, to imitate. So he's saying imitate him as he imitated the Messiah. So we supposed to be imitating. We supposed to be imitating the Messiah. Our life is supposed to be about honoring the Father, giving him glory. That's why I say, look, you can praise all you want. You can praise what he said. They praise me with their lips, but what? Their heart is far from me. But that glory, hmm, you can't play, you, you, you can't fake glory. Other people glorify you, but you're you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna honor something that you don't see as valuable. So again, like I said earlier, what will stop us from doing a lot of sinning, right? Is ask yourself before you say or do anything. Is this gonna glorify the Almighty? Is this gonna bring Him glory? And I guarantee you, you're going to think twice before you do something that's going to bring him shame. But it's going to all be based on how much you value him. If you don't see him that valuable, you're going to do it anyways. And they say, well, I repent. He, you, he know my heart. Oh, he know we just flesh that uh, uh, that's going to wither away. That's my Bible out. They ain't going off. <laughs> Anyhow, listen. Let, let's get to it, man. Hallelujah. Man, we got to be truthful with ourselves. We got to look at him, know that he's valuable. Uh, if you need wisdom on something, ask him to reveal himself to you. If, if you want him to be more valuable to you, ask him. Do what Moses, what Moses, Moses say, show me your glory. Give me, Give me an abundance of you. I want to know more about you. And the more you know more about him, the more you want to seek and hunger after him. You ain't going to be able to get enough. Like one of them little good episodes y'all like on that Netflix thing, you event, what they call uh, binge watching. Nobody ain't got to convince you to go watch them episodes you really like. You will sit there and watch the whole season. When you really like something, so when you really taste and see how good he is, you're going to keep, you're going to want him. You ain't going to be able to stay at your body. But if he ain't that good to you, you might, you know, give him a little taste every now and then. You know how it is. We got kids. We ain't got to tell the kids, hey, hey, uh, wife, you bring some peace in here. You ain't got to say, hey, y'all, it's peace in here. They can smell it from the room. They come and you got to tell them to get no plate. But boy, she going to cook them, uh, 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 what are them green things called? The, um, they look like leaves. The, uh, not the cabbage, they look like baby cabbages. The Brussels sprout. She eat them Brussels sprout. Uh, uh, uh. Broccoli, whatever. Yeah, hey, we, uh, dinner ready. It's definitely me. You know what I'm saying? Dinner ready. Yeah, hey, that piece, boy, they gonna go. We gonna go back and get seconds and thirds and fourth. But that broccoli, boy, you get your get your one plate. Are we straight? I'm full. You ate three Brussels spots. How you full? <laughs> Listen, when you like something, when you want something, you gonna go get it. If we really truly honor the Messiah, if we really truly love the Messiah, right? And we understand this growth. I don't want nobody to beat nobody down, but you may be, you want to read a little bit, you know, but it's growth. I'm just saying the more, the more you keep seeking after him, the more he reveals himself unto you, the, that's how he's going to become so good to you. You're going to keep wanting more, 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 more. This is about getting intimate with him. All of us don't bend in that relationship. You just go to sleep on the phone. 
when you first meet the person. All in love, booed up. Nobody ain't got to tell you to call them, call her. No, no, nobody ain't got to do none of that. You're going to do it on your own because this you got a desire in you. You got a desire to be intimate. You got a desire to want to know the person. This is how we pull to be the Messiah. When he see that we got a desire to want to, to, to learn of him, to want to be with him, to be intimate with him, guess what? We're going to be decreasing. He's going to give us more of himself. He's going to give us an abundance because he's going to know this person love me. This person want to honor me. They want to glorify me. So let me get, let me give him more of me so I can be glorified, so I can be lifted up. And guess what happened when he say, if I be lifted up, guess what's going to happen? He said, I draw men unto me. We ain't got to do too much talking. All we got to do is glorify him, lift him up, and he say, I'm going to do the drawing. That's why you got all these churches with these gimmicks. Selling, they got free TV giveaways, uh, free food, they ain't got food sound, free food giveaways, free free joints, uh, uh, free movie tickets, okay, For, uh, free free gas cards. They're doing all these gimmicks to get people to come to church. They ain't lifting the Messiah. All we got to do is lift him up and people are going to come. Hmm? But when you ain't lifting them up, you're going to have to do some gimmicks. You, you're going to have to do like some of these people do. They down other pastors. They down other congregations to get people to look at them. That's how most of these, that's how most of these people even get a whole bunch of people to follow them because they were talking crazy. And most people like crazy talk. Most people like confusion. Most people like uh, 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 strife. They like confusion. You got to down nobody. You ain't got to condemn nobody. We just supposed to be the light. Just light up. Lift him up. And the people, if the Messiah uh, want them, they're going to come. But light do two things. Though. Light bring what? Light repel. But let me get back to this. Philippians 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done in strife or vain glory, but in lowness of mind, let each other uh, 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 let each esteem the other better than himself, right? Man, this a whole sermon right there. Who does this? We should be doing this. Look not every man of his own things, but every man also of the things of others. Let this mind be in you, this is my Uncle Willie's favorite scripture, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, being made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. I mean, when they say made of no reputation, he, it wasn't about him being known. It wasn't about him being glorified. He didn't want no reputation. He took on the form of a servant. But boy, we want that name to reign. <laughs> hallelujah. And being formed, watch this, and being found, hallelujah, being found and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. So, so look, the Messiah, listen, when it when it's saying he found himself in no reputation, understand this. We're going to read. We're going to get that John. We'll close out with John uh, 17. Uh, but understand the Messiah had a glory before he came, but he emptied himself, right? He emptied himself. He didn't want no reputation when he came down. He emptied himself so he could not, let me say this. When he came to the earth, he wasn't empty, huh? Not that when he came to the earth, he wasn't empty, okay? Look, he, he was, he, he had the spirit, right? The spirit, the dove came on him and filled him up. So he was full of it, full of the spirit, right? But when he's saying, when you look at that word reputation, he found himself with no reputation. He, he, it wasn't no self-glory in him. It wasn't him trying to lift up himself. He didn't come here to lift himself up. He come here to do the work of the Father. He said, I say and do nothing. Let the Father tell me. He was empty. We have to empty ourselves. Huh? Not, not but, but fill ourselves up. Let, let, let him put the abundance of his spirit in us. Let him fill us up with his glory. That's what we want to give to the people. That's what, man, that's what we want to give back to him, first and foremost. So the Messiah, if the Messiah done it and we pull the fall after him, we got to get our minds. We say, you know, it's not about me. 
It's not about my name. It's not about my image. This is about the almighty. Guess what? But you're going to have to humble yourself. That's what I said earlier. You're going to have to decrease and let them increase. You're going to have to humble yourself. We have to humble ourselves. We can say, look, it's, it's, it's a hard thing. This is the woke. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. When you love yourself, when you, when you honor yourself more than you honor him, it's a very hard thing. And all of us, look, all of us, well, let me not say all. I'll say who else? Good portion of people love themselves at this point more than they love the Messiah. And how I know that's true, if not, I see nothing but the Messiah in all of us all day long. We'll see the glory of him. But when we see this flesh, that's you saying, look, I, I want to show me other than the Messiah. When you choose to walk in your flesh, ain't no in between. When you choose to do what you want to do, you're following your flesh. You're showing that you honor yourself more than you honor him. That's what it is. So we got to learn how to uh, uh, we got to learn who he is. We got to really we got to really see him and who he is and what he's done in our life. I mean, when you really understand what the wages of sin, it really said the wages of sin is death. That's separation from him. When we understand what it's like to be separated from him. We won't take so many chances with uh, uh with, 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 with with mercy and grace. We, we won't we won't just just we we we'll, we'll, we'll oh man we we will we will honor him more. It'll be easier for us to die to ourselves to glorify him when we really understand that when we choose to do what we want to do, we're dishonoring him. We're not glorifying him. We don't see it like that yet. In, 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 in totality, we don't really see it like when I walk according to my flesh. I'm not bringing him glory. I'm dishonoring him. We'll get tired of saying the last time, my last time is my last time. We'll get tired of saying that. This is my last time. I ain't going to do it no more. Forgive me, Father. You'll get tired of repeating that over and over for the same thing. Get down on your knees praying. Do it. Do it. I'm not telling you don't do it, but you'll get to the point where you realize, man, let me... I made the time I'm going to come down and say that this is my last time. I'm going to keep repeating. I'm going to keep repenting for the same sin. This when he when he start revealing who he is, when he start revealing his glory to us, when he really, when, he want to do it. He want to show his desire is to show us who he is. His desire is to be intimate with us. His desire is to show us how much he loves us. If we just would allow him to do it, if we would allow him to come inside, allow him to love on us hmm? so he can glorify himself in us. If we don't do it, somebody, he, he, it's going to be done. His glory is going throughout the whole, it's going to go through the earth. But I believe the Almighty that He 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 He's transforming us. He got a people that He's transforming, He's creating in His in His image. But the only way we're gonna get there is through the Son. Hmm? We gotta go through the Son. Huh? Because He is the express image of the Almighty. Hmm? Um that's all I wanted. We're we gonna close it out with um John 17. And we'll start. Thought that let me pull it up with my yeah. Uh hallelujah. Uh we'll yeah. We'll start at verse one and just run it down. We'll start at verse one. Yeah, 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 yeah. How far we gonna go down? We'll start at verse one. And I stop when we stop. 
yeah let's go this is beautiful too this is beautiful john 17 I said verse one, verse one, these words spake Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thou son also may glorify thee. Hmm? As thou has given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. Hmm? And now, O Father, glorify thy me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So this let you know when we read that Philippians, when he humbled himself, the Messiah already had a glory up in the Shawanees, up in the heavens. He in the heavens, he had a glory, but he he he, he put it off to come down here to glorify the Father, to be a servant to us, to be a servant to the disobedient ones, huh? But we don't want to humble ourselves to people who who, who being disobedient. And what I mean by that, I ain't talking about following nobody, no sin. I'm talking about still show forth the care to the Almighty. Still, still walk in love. Still be gentle. Still be meek. Huh? Still, still uh, be gen uh, gentle, meek. Uh, still show love. We want to give people a piece of our mind when they piss us off. I'm going to let them know. I still got a little bit of glory in me. Now, don't try me. Now, nah, we're supposed to die to self. And glorify him. Now Messiah said, let me get that glory back. Glorify me with the glory I had when I was with you. He understood the mission. He completed his mission. He came out here and glorified the Father. Just think if he, just think once you get reborn, if, you, if, if the Messiah, you, he come in your heart, you got a mission now. Your mission, like we read earlier, your mission is to glorify him. But you're not going to be able to glorify him and you at the same time. You got to, which one you going to glorify? You want to be glorified or you want him to be glorified? Hallelujah. Let's see. Uh, let me read that again. It says, and now, o Father, verse five, and now, o Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me, and they have kept thy word. Listen, I'm going to stop it right there. What should I read that? I'm going to stop right there. Let me see that. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know, I'm going to read. Yeah, let me, let me read down. Look, just understand this. I want us to see this. And they have kept my word. You, we want to keep this word. Because ultimately, it's the word that's working in us that's going to bring him glory. We're going to keep his word. We're going to hold on to his word. And when he say manifest his name, he's talking about he manifested uh, the character of the almighty. They already knew his name at this at this time right here. It wasn't that we weren't guessing what his name was like we do today. Well, I think his name is. I believe his name is. They knew what the father's name was. So when he said I manifested our name, he's mean I reveal your character unto them. How? By living a holy and righteous life. By doing only what you said and told me to do. That's how he revealed the name to the people. Because the people, they had the word, but they forgot how to walk in the character of the Almighty. They didn't have his character. They, they didn't know. See, look, somebody can talk a good game, but you've got to see the person walking this out. That way you ain't tricked by some, 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 uh, some slickster just telling you a whole bunch of scriptures. You'll be able to see the walk matching the talk. Now they have known that all things whatever thou hast given me are of thine. 
Hmm? So you see, he ain't take no credit for herself. Well, or of thee, he's saying. For I have given unto them the words which thou hast given me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didn't send me. So what? Look, he ain't saying nothing. He was, he come, he ain't said, no, sorry, he ain't come switch nothing up. He only was saying what the father said. That's why it's crazy to me when I hear people say, well, that was the God of the Old Testament. We ain't the God of the New Testament. Well, you putting the Almighty against itself because he, if you say he, the Messiah is saying something different than the Old Testament, right? You're saying, because he just said the Father, I only say what the Father say, that means the Father switched up. He said, I ain't said nothing unless the Father told me. But you have some of these people around here saying, no, that was then. Let me finish reading. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I have glorified, and, and, and I'm glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I have come, yeah, I'm glad, hallelujah, thank you, Father, I'm glad I kept reading. And I come to, to thee, Holy Father, keep, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them. In thy name, those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the, uh, in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not for, watch this, I pray not that Thou shouldest take them out of the world, but they should keep them from the evil. They, they are not of the world, even though I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, that thy word, thy word is thy truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. See, remember we, because the game plan is to spread his glory through the whole earth. So he's sending us into the world, and we already read uh, uh, we go into the four corners of the earth. We read that uh, Genesis 28, 14, say the north, south, east, and west, right? But for what reason? What reason was he going to send him to all nations? So that the Father may be glorified. Not that you can go over there, and, not that we can go over there and get some self-glory. It's that we may glorify the Father wherever we went at. But let's finish reading. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them. This one, hallelujah. Because he was talking about the disciples, but I want to watch what he say about us. He said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Okay? That's disciples making disciples. Because he sent the disciples out to preach this gospel that, 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 that the Almighty may be glorified. Right? So listen. When you receive this word and you and you're willing to decrease and allow him to be glorified in you and you doing this, guess what? The people that it's possible that they will believe on the Messiah from the word that you've given them. But it's the same word. You ain't coming with your own word. You coming with the word that you were disciple with. And it's supposed to go all the way back to Messiah, all the way back to Abba. And he would get all the glory. This ain't nothing about us coming with our own little twist of things, putting our own little spin on it. This is about us giving him glory through his word. Hmm? That, let me see here. Hallelujah. Yeah, that, let me see. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which I have given, given me, I have given them. Whew. Boy. <laughs> Come on, man. Messiah say the glory that was given him, he has given us. Where's that? We got to decrease. The glory in you. 
The glory is in you. If the Messiah is in us, the glory is in us. We just got to decrease. So the Father be glorified. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them, that they may be one, even, even as we are one. So part of the glory is also to get us on one accord. Hmm? I, boy, I and them and, and thou and me, that they may be made what? Perfect in one. Boy. And thou, and, watch it. And they, I'm sorry, not they. This strong messed me up. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and I has and have loved them as, as thou hast loved me. Father, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it that, I'm sorry, and I will declare it, they that love, sorry, that the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Hallelujah. Listen, this is about his glory. This is about the Almighty, this is about Allah being glorified in us, right? But we have to go through the King, we have to go to Messiah. He's going to reveal himself unto us, and he's also going to reveal the Father unto us. And once we come into this understanding and we see and we see the Messiah as valuable, we're going to desire of abundance of his, his, his of abundance of his essence, abundance of who he is, and we're going to decrease and he's going to be glorified in us. And we're going to take this word from person to person, from temple to temple. Hallelujah. That's all we got on this lesson. I uh, love y'all. Uh, let's get to the Hebrew roll call. Hallelujah. All praises to the king. Hallelujah. All praises. Uh, who we got on here today? Glory. Hallelujah. Uh, let's start it off with. Um, he's a dance machine, too. Brother Samson. But he's going to be dancing for the Lord. Hallelujah. Would you like to say anything, Brother Samson? <laughs> Preach. <job. laughs> yeah, we're going to keep dancing. We're going to do that. Bless his family. Good word today, man. <clears throat> Glorifying him is uh, most definitely everything. Some of the steps that I've been striving, striving for. And uh, I was blessed by the word today, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss y'all. Love you, Love you, brother. All praise to the king. Uh, let's get Miss Brixton. Miss Brixton, not Tony Salathia. What you got for us? <laughs> Blessings, blessings, family. Great lesson. Um, I a lot of ouch moments today in the in the lesson. Some uh mm. some some humbling <laughs> scriptures were brought to to my attention. Um, so as always, great, great lesson. Always um I take everything in and then just go back and read on my own just to get myself more familiar uh, with the scriptures and just continue to stay anchored. Hallelujah. All praise to the king. Blessings. Let's get uh, Aaliyah. Would you like to say anything? Do you have anything to say? If not, say Shabbat Shalom with a very encouraging message, challenging, challenging me. Uh, I'm going to read all. Oh, I guess my thing went out. Can't see the rest of it. Yeah, to, to obviously challenging me to really work on myself. Hallelujah. All praise to the king. Uh, a Koti Monica. Yes, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Glad to have you on the Koti. Um, Jackson. <laughs> Y'all Mill, what you got for us today? Or, or Nike? Hey, blessings, blessings. Uh, yeah, we, we both here right here. Um, we don't got nothing, you know, just some, just confirmation, you know, some things you was bringing out, uh, some things that I was into this, this, um, this week, just reading. So good word and, um, all praise for the confirmation. A lot of things. Hallelujah. All praises to the King. Um, our Dean, Uncle Willie, would you like to add anything? 
to Barcelona, everyone. Happy Sam Day. Uh, it was so beautiful. Uh, I don't know how to express the love that Abu has uh, given us and shown us. Uh, but I got, I learned this one thing here that, uh, you know, when I say nothing to do nothing, that's my father tell me to do it. Mm. Like, 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 Ivo, Ivo, he knew to follow instructions. That was like, mm-hmm. like you say, the character. You say, like, uh, Adam and Eve had the, the character of God. It was going, I mean, the image and likeness of God. But mm-hmm. uh, Christ had something different that he knew that to have followed the instructions mm-hmm. of God that Adam and Eve didn't know and uh, Noah's sons didn't know. But 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 they knew God, but they didn't take to high value the, to to follow His instructions to be obedient and to stay in line mm. with His word, and that's that's vital for us to make this a journey. It's just, just follow His instructions. Don't question that, and don't try to weigh out that. Love you, Happy Sabbath Day. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Good stuff. All praise to the king. Mother Barbara J. Johnson. Hallelujah. Let's go on to uh, Ock O or Quoti T. Would y'all like to say anything? Shabbat Shalom, family. Uh, we ain't really got much. It was just an excellent word. I remember I had caught myself, I think, yesterday. Uh, Fridays are usually kind of busy during my day at work. And so... I got kind of aggravated during work, and I found myself being like, oh, I don't want to be here, this and this and that. But I had to go outside and kind of like just take a little break. But in that process, uh, the spirit kind of hit me to be like, man, look at everything around you. Like, just, mm. just pause real quick and just look at everything around you. Like, just try to find me in everything. Like, you see how, like, it, it, it's gloomy, but it, it's not, like, raining deep on you. The sun is out, but it's, the sun ain't, like, killing you mm. right now. It's still enough to where your grass and everything is still growing. You, you looking at the car right next to you, that car still ain't broke down yet. You done had it for like a good amount of years. You see that house that's right behind you, like you in the house and it's still working. The electricity and the internet and everything is still working. Oh, you know, you like, continue just to try. If the more that you try to find me in things, the more you'll realize and see that I'm still working with you and I'm still working for you instead of looking at some of the things that might feel uncomfortable or your situation. So just like, like you said, just finding the, the theme of, of the most high and everything, and that'll uh, kind of change and shift our direction and our mindset into being like, you know what, all right, Abba, yeah, you are, you have been working for me, and I know whatever is supposed to be in this, this situation, you, it'll turn around, or I just got to be patient and be <laughs> just like our forefathers did in, in this time of the situation, because uh, uh, mm-hmm. Joseph didn't deserve being in, in prison in that time, but, mm-hmm. you know, most high got him to it. Abraham, in those times where he was a uh, uh, childless mm. and he didn't know what was supposed to happen with the promise, and look where we at now. So just just a lot of things just going on, just being able to still to see the Most High and everything, and a lot of that just to turn it, just turn things around for us. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Well said. Hallelujah. Um, man, all praise to the King. Uh, Akoti Mitchell Lee, would you like to add anything? Hallelujah. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, this has been a very, as Salafia said, there are some ouch moments in uh, some of the scriptures that, and some of the things that were said uh, today, and particularly when you were talking about, um, well, the way I took it was if, if uh, you're not successfully reaching out to people, don't look at them, look at yourself. So that was ouch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's kind of funny because Abba has revealed some things uh, to me this week that definitely areas in my life that I, I need to work on because I'm just not a loving person. And um, I mean, I love the people that I love, but everybody else, whatever. And that is really not, <laughs> that's really not how Abba is. Oh, and praise so He's been revealing some things to me and uh, challenging me on some things this week. So, uh, yeah, if I'm going to be an ambassador, Hallelujah. Be a priest, a priest, if I'm going to be, Hallelujah. you know, a dedicated temple to him, then I better learn. I'm, you know, I, honestly, I, I, I have known and he's been revealing to me that and I have been know, knowing 
that I really needed to focus on loving people. Um, I think that was kind of what he kind of revealed to me since Passover of, of, of earlier this year. And so I've been slowly working on it, but wow, he just revealed it some new things to me <laughs> this Hallelujah. week. So it was very convicting. So yeah, amen. Thank you uh, for uh, Abba who chastises us and uh, forces us to do better. So Shabbat Shalom oh, family. Praise. All praise, good stuff. All praise to the King. Hallelujah. Ema, would you like to add anything? Hallelujah and amen. And I am like uh, Mitchell Lee and Salatho and uh, Akho. And in that, there's some ouch moments in here. Um, a lot of stuff that came out that was just, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's a lot. Um, I can agree with Akho when when he talks about the the blessings. I I was telling the ladies on last Saturday when we was talking when we on Tuesday actually when we were praying. That the, when I woke up one morning, I heard count, you, you know, the old song the children used to sing, count your blessings, name them one by one. And I was like, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> so we're supposed to be, I should be counting my blessings. But if you think about it, you can't count them. There's so many uh, that the Most High has done from us from birth to the fact that we're here now. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there's so many things that He's done and ways that He's kept us and and protected us and secured us and provided for us that we don't even know. We can't count them. We don't have enough in us to be able to even recall them all. And so, with that, it's a humbling process, and we should be giving Him all praise and all glory. Um, and so, you know, through the reading of the word this week and just, you know, um, trying to get myself back into being more in a place of worshiping him through all things, especially, you know, reading my word and, and you know, fasting and praying, um, trying to give my all back to him um, rather than trying to, you know, constantly see, looking at what's not right, um, paying more attention to what is right, which is the fact that I can breathe each and every day, mm. which is a blessing. Uh, one of the things that came up uh, was when you read Abraham, uh, when, you, when you were talking about Abraham in Genesis, and um, it kind of stuck out to me. And I don't even know if you really mentioned it, and I, I, I may be just saying it again. Um, but uh, and it's in uh, 18 that he talks about uh, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all mm -hmm. the nations of the earth shall be blessed. In 19, he tells you how. He says, for I know him, that he will command his children and mm -hmm. his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice mm -hmm. and judgment and the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him so when you look at John um, 8 and they're talking about oh well we are of the seed of Abraham and he tells them well you can't be the seed of Abraham why mm -hmm. can't you be the seed of Abraham because Abraham was going to teach his children and to command them in the, his whole household mm -hmm in the way of the Lord. And so if we're doing that, then we're bringing him glory. So it's not about, oh, well, I'm blood born, Ab I'm, I'm blood born from, from Abraham. I am spiritually born because I am teaching Hallelujah. my household in the ways of the Lord. I'm not concerned about whether I, the blood flows through my veins. I'm concerned about that they're serving the household of the Lord, which is Hallelujah. Us and teaching Everyone, those are the children of the household. We're teaching everyone of his ways. And, and by doing that, bringing the glory, not only that which is in us, because if you think mm. about it, they, used to, they were imparting the glory into um, when, when, uh, into others. Uh, when Moses, when he said, call the elders, I'm going to put a piece of you inside of them. Uh -huh. What is he in them, the glory. I'm putting the glory in them. And so our work is to do that, is that we're supposed to spread the light no matter where we go. We're supposed to bring the glory and our shadow should be able to change our appearance and in, in any place should change the atmosphere of every place because the glory is within us. Um, and so um, that was a lot <laughs> that I, oh, I got out of, out of that. And um and then the other thing was, um, he also mentioned, he was like the glory of the, uh, well, in the word, it says the glory of the latter house, the, of the latter house shall be greater than the glory yeah. of the. And that is because we are, if, 
we're first able to do more. We're able to go more. We're able to be in in many places. And I think about how everybody wants to focus on, well, we were brought over into bond, from bondage or into bondage um, on slave ships. And everybody want to focus on that. But this word says we were scattered throughout the whole earth well before mm. that happened. Our glory should have been moving the whole entire time. And so I'm like, uh, we may be the people and we may not be the people, but what are the people supposed to be doing? And so, I, you know, this was just, it was very eye opening today. Um, I, I want to just add one more thing. I, I watched this movie this called, time. that was mentioned called Leave the World Behind. I don't know if anybody else has I mentioned it. Um, it there's so much in that movie. Right, check it out. So much in it. You, I mean, there's some foul language, so you got to get past all of that. They do some yeah. secular music in there, but pay attention to what's being said. Yeah. Um, and believe it or not, this was done by Barack Obama. I was shocked yeah. to see that. Yeah. But pay attention to what's being said in the movie. There, to how they're talking about how we are so we're walking in delusion, and we're and to so that we don't see the nastiness of ourselves. And so it was, I'm, mm-hmm. it, it, it was good. And I just wanted to say that, that this word was amazing today and Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I love you. Oh, praise to the King. Hallelujah. Beautiful stuff. I'm about to check it out. Oh, praise. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Maury Troy, would you like to say anything before we get out of here? Hebrew. I don't know if he can speak. Can't speak today, but awesome word, bro. Shabbat shalom to the family. All praise to the king. Glad to have you on. Um, that's all we got. We're going to pray out and bid each other farewell, but his presence is going with us. Uh, Abba will. Um, let's read this first in Corinthians 110 and we'll pray out. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind, in the same judgment. Abba, Yah, we thank you right now in the name of your son, Yeshua, from the world called Jesus to Christ, my king, our king, our savior, our master, hallelujah, your only begotten son. We thank you for this plan that you have put together, hallelujah, that you may be glorified in the earth and we're forever indebted unto our king, hallelujah, who is obedient unto your word who glorify you in this earth like nobody else could. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, hallelujah, for allowing us to be reconciled back unto you. Hallelujah. For allowing, just, just for allowing you to have your spirit and dwell in us where we can bring forth your glory to the earth. Hallelujah. We can be a part of this plan that your name, hallelujah, that your character will fill this earth up, hallelujah, where people will know, hallelujah, how loving, how graceful, how merciful, hallelujah, that you are. We just thank you so much that you were able, hallelujah, to save a, a ranch like us, how some, some filthy, hallelujah, people, hallelujah, that you were able to come clean us up, wash us, hallelujah. And even and even when we you wash us, hallelujah, when you continue washing us with your word, even though sometimes we put dirt back on us, hallelujah, you continue to wash us, Father. We thank you, Father, for continuing to wash us, for continue just to keep a hedge of protection around our minds, around our heart. We pray for our brothers and sisters, hallelujah, who may not be walking, hallelujah, who, who may be walking contrary to your word right now. We pray that you will bring them just as you brought, brought us. We thank you and we love you. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. All praise to the king. Love y'all. Uh, Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Yeah.